What's going on guys? In today's video, I'm gonna show you the best staff and wand build with DPS and healing rotation. You guys can be the best DPS and healer at the same time. Just look at this boss HP. It's melting like butter while your character is on the move. You don't have to stop and cast. You can just run around and dot these bosses. And also, it's good in PvP as well. I'll be showing you guys all the DPS rotation as well as healing. As you can see here, you can get unlimited mana while just standing still inside this blue circle. It's the ultimate spec, so let's get straight into it. Alright, let's get started with the skills here. I'm going to make it easy for you guys to start. You guys can just pause this video and take a screenshot of all these skills and abilities that I have on my hotbar. So I'm going to start with the DPS rotation. I'll tell you all the skills that we need first before I'll later show you on how the real rotation is. So the first one is high focus. It'll increase your cooldown speed by 40% for all skills and increase movement speed by 22% for 12 seconds. You're going to be picking the base damage boost skill specialization, which I'm going to show you later on. The next ability in your rotation is time for punishment. It's a debuff that will lower your target resistance and also it has a chance to weaken curse. Next, we're going to be needing the touch of despair, which is your main dot ability which you can add effect duration as well as curse and skill specialization which i'll show you later on as well next is the curse explosion which is a huge burst based on your dot abilities and we're also going to be having the decaying touch this is an upgraded version of your ability and the skill specialization which i'll show you later so basically you want to cast time for punishment and then put these three dot abilities on your target all right, next, you're going to be using your fire and lightning ability. Let's start with the serial firebomb. I like to put that on my hotbar 1, followed by inferno wave on my hotbar 2. Then on my hotbar 4, we have the judgment lightning, which is a huge burst dealing lightning damage. The best part is that all of your damaging abilities on your hotbar is instant cast. You don't have to cast anything with the help of your skill specialization, which I'm going to show you later on. But before that, I'm going to tell you something very important. You want to be upgrading your abilities. So right-click any of your abilities, and then you want to be upgrading them. You have to have this growth books, which is categorized under common, rare, and also epic. I believe we can get them from questing, maybe contract, dungeons, and in most of the PvE content in the game. So I'm going to show you an example on how you upgrade your skill. So I'm going to select a random skill here. You just want to keep upgrading until level 6, and then it will turn into another rarity from common to rare. And then you're going to upgrade it 6 more times. It will upgrade from blue to epic. So if you look at my abilities here, the most important skills that you want to upgrade will be your Dawn abilities. I upgrade my Touch of Despair to Epic Level 2. I also upgrade my Swift Healing to Epic Level 1. My Fountain of Life, my Invincible Wall, all of my healing abilities I've upgraded to Epic Level. So you guys can pause this video and see which skills that I've upgraded most. Those will be the priority. Alright, speaking about healing abilities, I almost forgot to talk about that. The rotation will be the Fountain of Life, where you put this circle on the ground. It'll give you healing to all your party members, as well as give you mana with the skill specialization. Your single target healing will be the Swift Healing, which you can upgrade it, where you can cast it up to 3 times. Your big cooldown is the Invincible Wall, where you're expecting a huge boss ability. That will damage your entire rate. You want to be casting that. And finally, we have an AoE healing ability, which is Clay's Salvation. I'll be showing you guys later on the healing rotation where we're going to be testing it on a secret dungeon boss. All right, now let's talk about passive abilities. The passive abilities that I've chosen are more focused on your dot build. So you can pause and select all the passive abilities that I've chosen. We have the Mana Ball Eruption which will increase your fire damage and also your base damage. We have the Devotion of Emptiness, which will increase your healing and also cooldown. Increases your skill damage as well and decreases curse skill cooldown. 
Another dot passive ability, the Wraith backend, which will increase the duration of your curse. Vampiric Contract restores allies' health of the damage dealt. This is awesome. It's all dot related. Another fire passive ability to synergize with the other fire passive skill. We have the Flame Condensation, which will increase burning damage over time. And it will increase 10 heavy attack chance per stack of burning. Next, we have Full of Corruption. This will increase your max damage and also mana regen, another dot ability. Next, we have Noble Revival. This will increase your skill of healing. And finally, we have Selfless Soul, which will grant health recovery and also regen to allies via active skills. So only two passive healing abilities. The rest are dot damage and two passive healing abilities are enough trust me i've done a lot of these dungeons and world bosses you can easily heal your teammates without any issues and also deal massive damage also don't forget to upgrade all your passive abilities same like you did for the active skills just right click and then upgrade them accordingly you'll need the passive growth book for this one I prioritize to upgrade my dot ability passive as it will help you deal more damage. For the healing one, I focus on upgrading the Noble Revival to increase my skill of healing, which will help to heal yourself as well as your ally. Alright, next let's talk about Weapon Mastery. For your staff Weapon Mastery, you want to be upgrading the middle one to about half and then go for the bottom one until the end. For your wand, you want to be upgrading the top one until half and then go for the bottom one until the end. Alright, finally we talk about the skill specialization before I'm going to show you the real rotation. You can just pause this video and follow all the skills that I picked for the staff and also wand. But I'm gonna just going to go through it real quick right here. So for your staff, for the serial firebomb, you want to be choosing mobility as well as instant casting. This way you can cast while moving as well as gonna be instant cast. For Inferno Wave, you just wanna choose cooldown as it'll reduce the cooldown by three seconds. You're also gonna be choosing consecutive use that will help you use this ability two times with a 50% chance. For high focus, you wanna choose base damage boost as it will increase your damage while casting this ability. So it's a good Starting ability to pop is like a trinket. You want to pop it and use all your abilities to burst on your target. And the final staff ability, you're going to be choosing damage transfer on your Dutchman Lightning. This is optional. I got just extra points. So I'm going to use it in the skill specialization. All right, next we have a ton of points here for one as we are focusing on dot damage. We have Elect Duration on Touch of Despair, which will increase the duration, obviously. And also Curse, which will have a 50% chance to inflict two stacks of Touch of Despair, which is really awesome. For Curse of Explosion, you want to be choosing all of the skill specialization. Let's we'll start with the Dark Explosion, Damage Increase, as well as Focus Target, which the Curse Explosion changes to the target skill and the cooldown decreases by six seconds so you no longer have to cast and it's no longer going to be an aoe ability it's a single target ability which you can instant cast next we have three traits here for swift healing we start with the healing transfers which will give you extra healing consecutive use which will allow you to use this healing ability three times instead of just two and this is optional if your teammates are too far away and hard to reach them I always pick this trait, which is kill distance, increase the distance by 5 meters. Next, we have deceiving touch, which will change this ability actually. It used to have a different icon for this one. Alright, next, this is important for group gameplay. So, we have the targets expanded. Instead of casting it on just yourself, it will cast to all party members nearby. The only difference is that instead of instant cast, you now have to cast it as a cast bar. Alright, next we have mana recovery for Fountain of Life. So this is important if you don't pick other mana regen abilities. I would advise you to get this one as if you stand inside of the Fountain of Life circle, it will give you mana as well. And also your teammates. So it's pretty handy. 
And finally, I like to pick this one as we'll increase another two seconds for your fountain of life, which is really useful for dungeon and bosses. Another thing that I forgot to mention is that you need to upgrade your gear. So be sure to go to your main menu, equipment and enchantment. You want to be upgrading every single gear. You can get these tokens from, I think, doing secret dungeons, all the solo dungeons. Yeah, you do all of them and you'll be able to upgrade most of your equipments right here. And obviously you can get all this epic gear from doing the co-op dungeon as well as world bosses. Alright, let's start to show you guys the rotation. We're going to be testing it on the 11th floor of the secret dungeon. So we're going to be starting with high focus and then cast time for punishment. After that, you want to be casting your three dots ability starting with your touch of despair, curse of explosion, as well as decaying touch. After that, you want to use your fire ability, searing fire bombs, inferno wave, and finally judgment strike. Then you just have to see which cooldown is up first. Sometimes your abilities will light up and available for instant cast. You're going to be using them. So you want to be prioritizing the time for punishment and the three dots followed by your two fire abilities and finally the judgment strike. So just look at how fast we drop this boss HP melts like butter and you can just move around constantly without having to worry about casting. This way you can always focus on parrying or deflecting some of your boss abilities and avoid those nasty stuff on the ground while doing bosses. All right, for the healing rotation, it's pretty easy. For single target healing, you want to be casting your sweet heals. You have three charges, but usually you don't do this. You just want to be dropping your fountain of life in the middle of your raid. This way, your tank will get healed. Everybody that stands inside of it will get healed and get mana. You want to get inside there as well. Then you want to be saving your invincible wall for the boss huge abilities that you think that is going to damage the entire raid. Or you can use this when the tank is about to take massive damage. And finally, we have AoE heals, Clay Salvation. You can use this if you see that your party members are low on health while they're not standing inside of your Fountain of Life. So that's pretty much about this Staff and Wand Guide. Hope this guide is helpful. This is your regular adventurer, Kasum. Thank you for watching and peace out.